Bridge to Terabithia changed my life in the way I looked at movies. So back when I was a young lad, I'm 23 now for reference, I was heavy on Disney and Nickelodeon like most other kids. And luckily for me, I grew up during the last great era of Disney in my opinion, where movies like Lemonade Mouth, Let It Shine, High School Musical, Hatch and Pete, and more were dropping all over the place and it was just constant classic after classic of 2010's original movies being put out. But even still, Disney was really good at paying homage and showing movies that were before my time, but were still timeless. You had movies like Smart House, The 13th Year, and Brink that were older than me, but I still was able to find enjoyment out of them. And then there was Bridge to Terabithia, a 2007 original that I may have watched when it came out, but it wasn't until I was later on in elementary school that the weight and content of the movie really hit me. And yes, the 2010s Disney movies covered hard topics as well, but it seems like Bridge to Terabithia is one of the only Disney movies to take a very ominous approach to the topics it covered like death and grief. And I know I'm not the only one to share the same sentiment because whenever I get on Twitter and see a Bridge to Terabithia tweet, it always has tens of thousands of likes with everyone in the replies talking about how much the movie has stuck with them throughout their entire life. Also, if you haven't seen this movie yet, stop watching this video and go watch it. Because from this point forward, we are entering spoiler territory. Also, it is one of the best kid movies to exist, at least in my opinion, or at the very least, one of the most impactful ones. So I definitely think it's worth the watch, especially before watching this video. So to give a quick refresher on the plot, it follows the story of this young kid named Jesse, who grows up in poverty in the country, which causes anger and frustration in him, but he's also a pretty talented artist. Then a girl that seems to come from a pretty financially stable family moves in next door to him. Her name is Leslie. Leslie is also a pretty artistic person person in her own way where Jesse's come from his ability to draw and hers comes from her imagination. Only thing is she doesn't harbor any frustration and is actually quite the opposite from him on a personality level. As a result, she starts to rub off on Jesse in all the right ways and causes him to let go of all the frustration and anger he's had pent up and they combine their artistic abilities together to create a fictional world called Terabithia. Now as you can guess, a big part of this movie's message is about embracing your creativity and letting your imagination run free. But I feel as if there's another underlying message being told about how you have to work to turn your dreams into reality. Looking at the movie, you'll notice there's very moments where Leslie and Jesse are building and planning things to help amplify their creativity to kind of help manifest it in a way. Like how they plan to build a bridge over to Terabithia or how they built a tree fort to work as a safe haven in this fictional world. I love this approach especially being older because that's how real life is. Having dreams and ambition is great, and being imaginative can spark inspiration, but if you're not putting in any work to make those things manifest, then all your hopes and dreams are doomed to become memories, and you're left wondering on what could have been or should have been. And I'm sure we can all think of someone who wishes they could replay their life and take that leap of faith they decided to step down from. But see, that's exactly why this movie is as highly regarded as it is, because there's little real life messages like that sprinkled into this movie that you can apply to yourself at any stage in life. This movie also has a very very ominous tone throughout it. I didn't catch it on my first couple of watches, but looking back at it again through the lens of somebody that's actually looking for things to review on, it just has that vibe to it from the beginning that it was kind of built into something major. Like watch this movie and then watch a 2010 classic like Lemonade Mouth. Both deal with real life issues and take serious approaches with them, but it just feels like night and day when it comes to vibes. But with all that being said, we know the real reason why this movie is so engraved in people's memories, the plot twist, and the ending. So as I stated earlier, Leslie and Jesse were planning to build a bridge to Terabithia because to get to their dream world, they had to cross a river by swinging on a rope that led to the forest. Now, as the story goes on, they drop hints noting that the river was getting higher and higher, making it more dangerous to cross over. Then one day, Jesse gets invited by his teacher to go to a museum, and when he comes back home, he walks in on his family in shock that he's still alive. Obviously, he's confused as to why, then it's explained to him that while he was out at the museum, Leslie made that same rope swing across, only this time, the rope snapped, causing her to fall in the river, bump her head, and drown to death. Now, when this moment happened and it hit me as a kid, I swear I reacted just like Jesse. Growing up watching the kids' movies I did, death was something that really wasn't touched on, or at least in a visceral way like this where they actually described how she passed. One movie I can think of is Finding Nemo. In Finding Nemo, it's very clear that the mother in the story didn't make it, but they never really touched or harped on it like that where they actually describe what happened to her. In fact, the screen cut the black right before anything severe could happen. And I think what hurt even more was the fact that Leslie was a child. 
and she still had plenty of life to live and was clearly presented as the most wholesome person in the entire movie. It also was one of my first times being humanized because as kids, we were always taught to do the right thing by others and be a good person. And here we have an instance where someone that walked in their life like that was still taken at a young age, conveying the message that life isn't always as fair as we want it to be. One of the biggest things that stuck out to me on the rewatch as well was the fact that Leslie didn't show up at all after that. Not in the dream or in Terabithia at the final scene at all, which also emphasizes how death is kind of final. I love the ending as well though, where Jesse builds the bridge and completes it. Then inviting his little sister to Terabithia where they look out at this world he and Leslie created, showcasing that even though we might pass, our dreams can still live on through the people we've impacted in our lives. But that's gonna do it. I definitely wanted this movie to be the first movie I reviewed on this channel because it is a big part of why I'm into film and animation the way that I am now because of the stories that can be told and the lessons you can learn. Of course, I still love the brainless horror and painfully bad comedy stuff as well, but it all started with this movie, a movie that showed me that movies and shows can do more than just be something to pass the time. As always, like and subscribe, hit the notification bell if you're new so you can be updated on whenever I drop a new video. I am going to start putting out videos a little bit more frequently now. Um, I took a decent break i think like i took like a two and a half week break in between my first video and this video but i'm gonna start pumping out the reviews i had to kind of just get around to get this review done because this was you know a movie that i definitely wanted to be one of the first movies i reviewed on the channel but until my next one i will see you guys when i see you guys i am out